Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on how to route external MIDI tracks to the QuickTime DLS synthesizer. First thing I'm going to do here, I've got a new Logic project open. The track sheets come up, I'm going to create one external MIDI track. Just create that. You'll see on our track list over here, we've got a grand piano. Over in our library, there's a GM device which is being routed to channel 1 grand piano. OK. So next thing I'm going to need to do is create a software instrument track, which we're then going to route to the QuickTime DLS synthesizer. So I hit Command, Alt and N. That's going to bring back up our track sheet and this time we're going to select a software instrument. OK. We'll ask it to open the library and we'll click Create. OK, so Logic's default behaviour is to open the EVP88 electric piano. Over here in the library, we can see that we've got the full list of Logic software instruments. Now, if we want to access the QuickTime instrument, then we actually need to come over here to our inspector bar. If you can't see that, this button toggles the view. So you need to make sure that your inspector button is pressed. You can see you've got this white circle around the outside now that indicates that the inspector view is there and you can see it pop up. So on our IO settings for the EVP electric piano track, we are just for the input going to select a different instrument. Click and hold and then scroll down to AU instruments, audio units instruments, over to Apple, DLS music device and stereo and just release and that brings up an instance of this DLS music device with the default sound bank, the QuickTime Music Synthesizer. So this is essentially just a bank of general MIDI um, sounds. OK. We've still got a problem here though. The EVP88 electric piano is displayed at the top here and we can see quite clearly that's not the instrument we're using anymore. So we need to do something about that. So I'm just going to close this plugin window. And in our inspector bar, we could do it here as well, but I'm going to do it in the inspector bar here. Double click and type QT for QuickTime Synth. OK. So now that's sorted, what we need to do is tell this channel that we want it to use this sound source. And to do that, we're going to need to access Logic's environment. Now, Logic's environment allows you to configure MIDI input sources, uh, audio input sources and output sources, and each of your software instruments. There's all sorts of things you can do with relationship to fader controls and things, which I'm sure we'll get into later. If we hit Command and 8, and that brings up our environment view. And at the moment you can see we're viewing the mixer. We've got a few things on here. There's the click, which is turned off at the moment. You can see pre-listen. And we have output and master. So what we're going to do is go over to our environment inspector bar, if you will, and just click on this drop-down menu. And you can see that there's a few options. All objects shows us everything in the environment. There's global objects. Nothing currently on the global objects page. Click and ports. That's our MIDI input port. We've got our caps lock keyboard there. Any external MIDI input is being routed through here. And we've got our MIDI instrument layer. OK, so if we click here, we can see this GM device and that's the tr 
the the device for the track that we already created it's brought up a standard 16 channel general MIDI device now if we're trying to drag to a MIDI instrument existing on this layer we could just use the output here and just drag a cable between things but the instrument we want to use is an audio instrument it's actually sitting on a different layer in our environment so to access another layer the quickest and easiest way of doing this is to hold down our alt key and then click and you can see it comes up with the option to reassign this output to different places at the moment multi-instrument GM device and it's got all of the options based on our GM device which would would normally be routed out of your MIDI output port from your MIDI interface or sound card and into an external synth. If we go to mixer and software instrument we can actually assign this output to the QuickTime synth and we get this error message that's normal don't worry cable and channel port is set do you want to remove the channel port setting we're going to click no logic thinks it's already set that up but in fact it hasn't okay so there we are those things are configured and what we should find now is we come out of our environment click the caps lock key to bring up our caps lock keyboard and then we play some notes we've got a piano sound let's just check that with our grand piano software instrument track okay so now we've established that the external instrument track for the grand piano is routing MIDI data to the QuickTime synth. And the benefit with this is, we come over to our inspector, we have got all of the functions you'd expect with any MIDI sequencer. We can change the channel, we can change the program number, volume, pan, etc. So keeping it on channel 1, I'm just going to change the program that we're using. I'm going to come down here and select a clean guitar. And we'll just see if that's actually the change. You can see it's changed on the track name in the window there. And sure enough, it's changed the sound as well. Now let's just try selecting a different sound. A trumpet for example possibly the wrong range for a trumpet okay great so you can see how that works so there you are guys that is how to set up an external MIDI track to route to the QuickTime synthesizer in Logic